everybody, what's going on? It's Angel here at the First in Texas District Championship on the Mercury Division. I'm here with Team 3847 Spectrum, everyone's favorite Open Alliance team, winners of the Houston and Belton events in Texas. They're gonna talk about their coral intake, elevator, climber, and some software stuff that they're doing. All this and more on this episode of Behind the Bumpers. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. First teams benefit when they optimize their robots utilizing Altair tools. If you're utilizing Altair, submit a video showing your optimization skills and potentially win up to $5,000 for your team or $2,000 for yourself each quarter from now until June 30th, 2025. Download Altair tools for free and view contest details when you scan the QR code or go to altair.com slash contest. Anymark provides superior service with the reliability that teams expect. Check out their sport gearbox and ratchet sport options to their tried and true compliant wheels used by teams all over the world. From mechanical and electrical products to tools and hardware, head on over to anymark.com for your one-stop shop of high quality and affordable solutions. All right, we're gonna pass it over to Drake who's gonna talk to us about some of the cool stuff that they're doing with the bumpers, Drake. All right, um, so this is our bumpers. We have HDPE backing right here and this is from the um 2019 game then we have foam two foam tiles one will be right here against the uh, backing and our two foam tubes and one will be on the bottom that is on the floor uh our bumpers are attached through bolts um on all four corners and then in the middle this right here is our bumper foot and what we use this for is to climb uh, are to climb deep and what will happen is we drive in the cage bottom we'll get hooked onto the foot and we'll pull back and uh, yeah. wow. so any specific reason you went with this type of uh, bumper material um well over all the bumper stuff we have gone through we just have been doing trial and error and so far these have been working very very well well, talking to you about that foot you had right there, let's pass it over to Charlie, who's gonna to talk to us about the York Climber. Sounds good. Yeah, so our Climber is powered by two Krakens, and it is on a pivot that pivots, and we are able to trap the cage and uh, drive through the cage and hook on our bumper foot, and then pass there. We're able to just bring this back up and trap the cage in a climb. We also uh, fully out of max composite arms and uh, some aluminum, and it has been working great for us. So a lot of teams didn't opt for this type of design when it comes to climbing. They go inside the cage to attach. You grab the cage from the outside. Tell us about the design process and how you came across this. Yeah, so uh, we, we, we want to be able to uh, grab the cage from as many, uh, at, from as wide as possible. And we found that it was the best in terms of aligning to the cage and getting those valuable last second climbs that are so necessary. So, yeah. Great, well now let's pass it over to Gabby who's gonna talk to us about your elevator and your arm. Sure, so we have a sideways elevator. It's a one stage elevator, um, just goes straight up, of course. <laughs> and then we have a double jointed arm. We opted for this concept because we were able to uh, pull it off in our 2023 off-season robot that played the game charged up um, it was on a slide so pretty similar to the elevator and the arm we made some minor adjustments to how we tension the arm so that it could be a little bit more stable so for example we have all of the chain is continuous so it's tensioned using this windmill system where we push the chain in from both sides so like from here and from here and there's a ratcheting wrench in the middle so that all the tension goes uh, this way with the chain so that it's very tight. Um, same thing here, we have turnbuckles that tension the chain this way so there's a sprocket that pushes the chain this way and then on the same on the other side. Um, so that's a pretty cool feature that we have. So it gives us 1440 degrees of rotation on all of those uh, joints. And then this part I think is really cool. It, we call it the bicep. So it's entirely 3D printed. Um, it's out of carbon fiber nylon, uh, which is really strong. And it's attached with a dovetail joint because we didn't have a printer that could print it this, uh, this long. Um, 
and it's held up for us really well over the course of our last um, two events and of course this one. Um, another cool part about our arm is that it's all coaxial, so it's all running off of this one max spline. Um, so there's one of one of the joints has like a hole cut out of it so that it can just spin normally on the max spline, and one of them is powered by the max spline. And for the max spline not to break. We made it super strong, so we call it Super Max Spline. Um, we put carbon fiber like rods through, you can kind of see it like through here, um, and one big carbon fiber piece through here and epoxied it all so that um, it like never bends. And we did that same process to this Max Spline as well, um, just to make sure that it's super strong. Cool, can we get to see this uh, arm in action? Yeah, sure, so we can hand it over to our controls people. Yeah, so really quick like that, um, yeah. <laughs> All right, well, very cool elevator and arm system, but you can't score anything with just an elevator and arm. You need an intake. So let's pass it on over to Michelle, who's gonna talk to about the coral and the algae intake mechanism. Yeah, so our coral and algae intake can score and pick up from both sides of the robot. Uh, they can pick up from the ground, both coral and algae, and then de-reef and score in the net uh, and processor for algae as well and then all levels for coral. And so um, the axis for the Z-axis wrist, or the twist we call it, is on the center of our robot so that we can line up to the center of the side of any reef and be able to score on each side of the branch because the coral is actually held offset by 6.5 inches. So we can just twist it over and score on whichever one we need to. Um, and then additionally, we tested like over 15 prototypes of this coral side. Um, it does a corkscrew motion to center the coral within the 12.5 inches along the shaft. Um, so coral can drop in from either the source or we can drive into it about five inches off from the center of any coral and be able to store it very fast into our coral side. And then all these plates are also held in by T-slot laser joints, which we found was the lightest assembly to put everything together. And then the algae pivot, um, we put it on a pivot so that it can clear the branch um, when we're scoring coral. And it's also pivot, or it's tensioned by a torsion spring. Um, and then the flex wheels are powered uh, through the Max 90 and then coaxially through this long Max line so that we can keep all of our weight and wiring packaged really nicely towards the center of our gravity. Um, and then we actually didn't intentionally design uh, the ground intake. We didn't think it was a high priority at first, but with this design, the final was coincidentally able to pick up from ground very nicely. So. Well, very cool, very effective design. It does rotate. Can we see it, uh, how it would score and pick up game pieces? All right, well, very cool. But I, what I'm seeing right now is I'm seeing a lot of limelights and I'm seeing a couple sensors. So let's pass it over to Alexis, who's gonna talk to us about some of the cool software stuff you're doing. Yeah, okay. Hi. So aside from, I guess I can start by, since we have the robot here, talking about some of the sensors we have on the robot. As you can see, we have two limelights on our robot. We have, this is our back limelight. And over here, we have our front limelight. And what these allow us to do is they allow us to center at the little QR codes at the reef faces so that we can have very consistent scoring positions so that our driver, all they have to do is press a button and our robot will just drive there and then they can do all the staging and we are able to get like the same scoring positions each time. And we also implement this, what we call auto align in our autonomous period. Our Autonomous coder actually made it so that when we drive to the reef to score, we use our auto align so that we can adapt to the different field positions and make sure that we're scoring coral correctly. Um, okay. I think I can talk more about some software stuff now. So if we go back here, I'd say 
Aside from like all the usual stuff like motor outputs and command groups, something unique about our robot this year that we've been working towards is what we call our spectrum state so, like system. Um, so you know how basically every team has what we call triggers and they're what they sound like. When you press a button, if you're holding the button, if you're not holding the button, we can use those conditions to control what our robot does. Now spectrum states are based on that, but they allow us to do more advanced <laughs> forms of true or false conditions. It's like a state of being. And they even allow us to do maybe more abstract concepts. So over here you can see we have our simulation. It's also another thing that we've been working on this year. And it's been very helpful because our engineering team has been able to use the robot more and we've been able to program while they're using the robot. So if I enable, over here you can see our states and home wall is one of our states and it's basically telling the robot to home while it is on. And if I try to score barge right now, I'm going to barge. You can see that we have all these states activated. We have L4 is our highest level of scoring for barging. And then algae, we're telling it to score algae at this time. And then reverse is one of the special abstract states I was talking about. Basically, it is something that we control whether it's true or false, depending on certain conditions on the field. As you may have noticed, our robot can score on both sides. And we would like to make the most use of that and able to basically allow our pilot and our operator to have the easiest time driving. So you can see, this is the front of the robot and this is the back of the robot. If I rotate the robot around, you can see that the barge switch sides. Basically what happens is our controls get the rotation of our robot relative to the net. And based on that, we can control our reverse state. And as you can see, our reverse state is gone, which is telling the robot to flip sides. And there it go. And in doing so, we can have much more advanced control of our robot. Well, some amazing and advanced software stuff you're doing. How do you ensure that you have enough time to program all this stuff? <laughs> yeah, this year especially has been a bit rough in time in terms of how much time we go with the robot. Um, as I mentioned, we do have our simulation, which allows us to test things on the simulation instead of on a robot to make sure that things don't break and to make sure that things are working. Um, but I think overall, our engineering team has basically been done with the robot for a while. So we have had a lot of time to do, with, to do programming things. And we do have two robots, which allows us to practice on one robot if other people are using the other robot. And we have a config system in place to make sure that not all robots are built the same, but we have full files in our code that have different sets of numbers that can adapt to each robot and basically the different quirks of each robot so that our robots are performing the same, whether on this one or on our practice one at home. Well, Spectrum 3847, what an amazing solution you have for this year's game. And best of luck to you all here at the First in Texas District Championship. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the bell to stay up to date on future fun videos. Animark provides superior service with the reliability that teams expect. Check out their sport gearbox and ratchet sport options to their tried and true compliant wheels used by teams all over the world. From mechanical and electrical products to tools and hardware, head on over to animark.com for your one-stop shop of high quality and affordable solutions. First teams benefit when they optimize their robots utilizing Altair tools. If you're utilizing Altair, submit a video showing your optimization skills and potentially win up to $5,000 for your team or $2,000 for yourself each quarter from now until June 30th, 2025. Download Altair tools for free and view contest details when you scan the QR code or go to altair.com contest.